Bitcoin needs to be spent as well, that we get that adoption point. Then we can get to a point where we actually get rid of the fiat system. We onboarded over 100 merchants so far and trying hard to, to get 500 to 1,000 this year. It could actually be the end all, be all money. Most of these projects will die. Since Lightning is there, we've got that massive growth of transactions. This could be such a massive trigger event for Bitcoin adoption. We need to orange pill merchants to send the message. You can be your own boss when it comes to your money. Why is it important for, for Bitcoin to not only be a store of value, because then we don't need uh, any medium of exchange things, but why is it important to use it also as a currency, also as actual money, as a medium of exchange? Well, from our perspective, you know, Bitcoin was made as a peer-to-peer -peer cash network, you know, so that was the, 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 the idea of it behind. And through to Lightning, this makes it now 100% usable, what I believe or what we believe, uh, to really send Bitcoin from a person A to a person B without a lot of fees, with instant payment settlement, as well as no chargebacks. Um, and this works like cash in the end, but just digital. So um, from our perspective, it's really important also for the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, that payments are done on the Lightning Network because obviously it's like um, with water, you know, if water is not running or it's not flowing, there will be bacteria. And bacteria, and the same is with, with with money. So if everyone just sits on their money and it's not getting spent, it's just losing value and it's getting ill. So um, we believe merchant adoption as well as Bitcoin adoption comes from paying with it as well. Obviously, there's a good good thing about hoodling, you know. Um, but you can wait for better times. But you can also just put twenty hundred euros um, dollars on your Lightning wallet and just help the ecosystem grow. And that's why we, why we believe lightning payments are very important for Bitcoin uh, from an adoption point of view. That's, uh, that's really cool. Um, do you think that as you are also orange billing merchants, as you are also in contact with them, do you think that first there's the merchant adoption generally? I mean, I mean both come together at the same time uh, so to a certain extent, but is, is the merchant adoption uh, or the consumer adoption first is like the merchant adopting because consumer asking for it or is like consumer using it because it's accepted at the merchant store? Well, it's a hand and egg problem, I believe, you know, because obviously we can orange pill private individuals. That's what we, I believe you and me are doing anyway our, with our friends and family. But just imagine when you've got a merchant who also got maybe like Bitcoin accepted stickers around and is obviously meeting people on a daily basis more than we maybe do because we've got not like a customer facing job face-to-face uh, -face job on a daily basis where we might be able also to orange pill uh, merchants, uh, sorry, consumers. Um, that's a very good thing for Bitcoin because it's like advertisement for, for Bitcoin on a daily basis. People can see the Bitcoin logo. It, it gets normal for them. You know, they, it becomes part of their normal day to see Bitcoin, Bitcoin signs to be able to pay in Bitcoin. And that might help the situation maybe for people who are not really easy to orange pill from a friend perspective or from an online learning perspective to see it in real life to make it tangible for them. That's also why we brought out our uh, lightning terminal um, post device because when you look um, how the merchants are working with it, you know, because when you download an app and accept Bitcoin payments, there's no stickers or something involved. There's no buy-in from the merchant. So there's no really a need from for, for, for him to do anything else when we when we decided to bring out our post device, you know, we really thought to have like an easy uh, s solution for not just the merchant but also the employees to that they have got fun accepting Bitcoin payments. It should be easy. It should be understandable, and um, that was our goal when we when we created Opago. Interesting. Well, when you talk with merchants, what 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 are you, the usual like pushbacks or like uh, things that you get from them? They're like, oh no, we 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 don't want to accept Bitcoin because of X X reasons. Well, I think that also depends on 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 where you are based. You know, in Germany, I can speak from a German perspective. You know, they're really you know Germans they they like to invest not very risky, so they like like old investment methods and bitcoin used to be or like they heard lots of uh, bad uh, bad news or on television etc scam scam stuff etc so that's why we also thought let's create that or let's build that company in germany with german legislation let's with the german gmbh because we've got obviously um yeah regulations and laws to follow and um i believe when we when we follow these laws in germany we can we are able to to follow them everywhere because germany is very bureaucrat has got a very bureaucracy state and or it's a very very uh, bureaucracy state and um i believe when we can make it here we can make it everywhere um 
but a merchant obviously needs more than just knowing that um, they've got a good good partner for accepting Bitcoin payments. It's about also what advantages brings Bitcoin out of them. So there's brings out for them. So obviously it's instant payment settlement. It's no chargebacks, but it's also the possibility to 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 get new customer new customers. Let's say tech, techy and younger customers, tech savvy younger customers um, who might be visiting the shop soon. So that's uh, really marketing vehicle for them now to accept Bitcoin payments to address new uh, customers as well. And that's what we really try to tell them that they've got possibilities to accept Bitcoin without much hustle. You know, it's just our device, which costs one time 99 euros. And then you just pay 1% uh, transaction fee and included this, the whole reporting from a CSV and PDF perspective, as well as coin tracking to then um, send all the transactions in one report to the tax consultant. Um, so that's also a service what we offer within, within our, within our, um, within our offering with, uh, with Opago, just that we have like this one, one solution for the merchant who might get up at 6 a.m. to to open his shop or maybe prepare food and close it at 10 p.m. Um, for cleaning it. And there's not really time for running a note or doing anything really tech deeply. So we really try to take that 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 um, from them and really just give them an easy solution to accept cheap, fast payments. And um, after showing them, I believe, or when we show them, you know, it's always not too difficult to sell from my perspective we onboarded over 100 merchants so far and uh, we're really trying hard to to get 500 to 1000 this year that's our target for this year and yeah i think it's more obviously bitcoin is getting yeah into the news etc it helps us even more to orange pill merchants in the end of the day Mm. You mentioned the marketing uh, value for merchants. I feel like that's really an, a good argument always for merchants mm -hmm. because you can see like there's the Bitcoin map and the other apps where you can see like who is accepting Bitcoin. Okay. And if more and more people are in Bitcoin and they're actually like, oh, I'm, I'm today in like, I don't know, in Italy, let's see if there's any merchant that accepts Bitcoin and then I go to this restaurant first, like the marketing uh, argument is a really good one. Is that the main argument that like usually get helps the, the merchant to accept it or is like the other better arguments uh, for them to accept it? Well, that's one of, of, of the arguments. Another one, obviously, is when we orange pillar merchant and we obviously try our best from our side to, 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 to make news about that new merchant on different channels like Telegram, Stacker News, Twitter, Facebook, and Facebook, LinkedIn, for example, and just to, to send a message that there's a new place to spend Bitcoin. And we've just orange built a burger bar in just near Munich. And I think that's two weeks ago. And they had sales in Bitcoin on a daily basis since then. So there were it's really nice to see that people from Munich go to that small, it's not a village, but it's called Unterhaching. It's also a, a famous football club is from there, but it's not in the, in the main city. So people still need to go there um, and they do it. So it's really nice to see that this merchants really got payments on a daily basis so far. And we're really trying to give them even more support than with advertisement and maybe going there with a Bitcoin meetup as well to then push that further even. Since how long are you uh, orange pilling or trying to orange pilling merchants? So personally, you know, before we started with Opago, I think I've started personally doing that, I think, three years ago. Um, that was also one reason why I then uh, came together with the others and uh, we built Opago together because we really wanted to have an easy solution to make it even more easy. You know, for me, it was just like a, a free time thing to do when I go out to have food just to ask if I can pay in Bitcoin. Yeah, I really thought, why, why not then building a startup together and really build a solution which is fast, easy and secure for merchants to accept Bitcoin payments. And that was our goal and is it still there. Yeah. Do you see, um, um, when, when I talk with other Bitcoin companies, uh, they, like, I see it with my few counts, I see it with the Bitcoin companies that I talk to, uh, no matter if it's a Bitcoin exchange or hardware wallet provider or anything like that, they always say the same thing when the, the price moves, no matter if it's up or down, the sales actually go up. Uh, and it's like, if it's stagnant, the, the sales are kind of like uh, flat. Do you also see that in like uh, Bitcoin as medium of exchange use case and also in like adopting new merchants and adopting a new Bitcoin accepted here? We could say yes, but I think that's from a, obviously from a news perspective, you know, Bitcoin goes up, we've got more news, more people can read in the newspaper, hear about it. But when you look from a payment perspective, I think the merchant looks into it a bit longer than just making a few bucks on a trade, for example. So we obviously implement that solution not for like a short cycle of three months or something. So we really uh, try to really onboard the merchant that it might obviously go down a little bit. 
that will be now started as well, but we've got a partnership with Bringin to then have also merchants um, who, are say, who say, look, I would be fine to accept Bitcoin, but I cannot have Bitcoin in my in my, in my my company company sheet. Um, I would like to receive euros. So um, there's some some merchants they would like to receive Bitcoin, uh, would like to receive euro due to the fact that we obviously still have these 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 uh, ups and downs in Bitcoin. And there's some some industries, for example, like gas stations or like let's say um, news agencies where they sell uh, tobacco products, uh, tobacco products with like high taxes on. They are not able to have that price difference. So they really would like to off ramp than to have that not anymore. So that's also something. Um, to think about for merchant when it goes down and they really think obviously we need to have uh, our numbers right we can't make any losses then to really switch then to maybe fiat offering during that time and then change it so we really offer the possible uh, the, the merchant to then decide how much of the incoming payment will be off ramped and how much will be staying in bitcoin so the merchant can decide for example when he receives 100 euro in bitcoin that 80 euros go to his lightning wallet and 20 euros will be off ramped to his zipa account and that's just something we try to offer them then obviously to have the whole yeah the whole spectrum of possibilities for their for their business to to operate um still within the economics that's interesting. Another question, a more holistic uh, approach. Do you think when we look at now Bitcoin, we have so many different <laughs> almost payment options. We have so many different monies even in the world, like uh, almost every country has its own currency. Of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, countries that just have the US dollar also, even though they are not in the United States. Um, do you think that we come to a uh, world where there's only bitcoin and with that also for payment is it's quite interesting because it's a protocol uh, like bitcoin and lightning it's just protocol so even if there are different clients and different things they're still, still accepted to one each other so that would be it would be amazing to have that um do you think that we get into this like singularity world where there's just one money uh, at some point obviously it's a long way down the road but uh do you do, do you have some framework to think about that well from my perspective you know just from a micro perspective because i cannot cannot or we cannot change the whole world you know we try just because we believe bitcoin is the best money available right now you know we've all seen what happens to us dollar or euro after certain circumstances like COVID or something else and i just believe you know bitcoin it's a very good good thing what we what we what we have these days, or the, like the best thing we have from a technolog technic technic technical point of view, money wise. And I believe one day everyone will will find will, will realize. But I think it's a long way till that. And because we've got lobbyism, we've got different things pushing into that adoption. And obviously, it's open source as well. So I, what I found out, it's obviously because it's open source and decentralized. There's not that big marketing altogether. To push that if you look for example to solana they've got that big solana foundation they've got loads of money they can push it really hard that's why we have that within four years we have them as high and there's a it's a big competition in my eyes to bitcoin because obviously solana pay they they've got more money as well as more marketing budget to then send the message to merchants to accept solana and i believe it's better for, for merchants to accept bitcoin lightning um, what we've seen is that other coins start to make atomic swap uh, atomic swaps to bitcoin lightning so it's possible to pay lightning invoices with other other coins as well but uh, that's something we cannot change for us it's important that our merchants receive bitcoin lightning or if they desire euro or fiat because they have to but our advice would also always be to the merchant to keep bitcoin within their balance sheet because it's some kind of saving saving um, for them um, in the business for the future and they will also be able to spend this bitcoin then for obviously needs in their company as well so um but in the end of the day you know i'm not i can i cannot uh, you know the glass glass uh, ball you know i cannot look in the future i just believe it's the it's the it's, a, it's the best thing available right now from a from a money perspective and it will win in the end of the day yeah i also think so and it's interesting uh i just got today a text of a friend of my dad and and he was like oh robin i just wanted to ask you about this sun coin and i'm like what what is that again and then i looked into the website looked at the videos and they're like oh yeah it's an obvious scam <laughs> like that's that's so obvious but the people don't get that like people are like oh it's innovative it's blockchain it's it's fascinating it's uh, uh so many scams out there 
But what I, when some people always ask me if it's also possible to use other cryptocurrencies to, to pay with Upago, but or why is there other cryptocurrencies? And, I, you know, from my perspective, you know, I've, I've been in, in Bitcoin since 2016, and obviously there were uh, other coins built afterwards to then maybe go into that, that there's just seven transactions on the main chain possible uh, with Bitcoin. But due to layer two now, there will be so much projects there's just no need for it anymore because lightning makes it makes it very yeah makes it makes it finish for us you know we've got that store of value with the biggest market volume that decentralized good money and we've got the possibility now to use it like cash actually it's there's it's just very very good you know and there's no external influence on it who can actually do much about it you know with obviously if you look into centralized coins we never know what happens is there is there, is there any more hidden somewhere you never know and that's something i wouldn't rely on if i would be a consumer yeah uh, it's it's i, I they, they showed some 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 tables like oh bitcoin is that and i think oh really uh, bad yeah. uh, but just be aware of scams i feel, I feel yeah. like I, I have to say it every once in a while in in, in a bitcoin podcast yeah. um it's, it's interesting how you how you frame it. Do you think that Lightning will remove any use case for any altcoins when when you basically have the most secure network? Then you can build layer twos and layer threes. You we even have like the runes, we have the ordinals, we have all all those how do you call it taproot assets. There's yeah. so many different things that the NFTs, all this uh, altcoin things, we can also now build on on top of Bitcoin. Does Lightning just uh, Lightning or layer two solutions in general? Co completely eliminate any use case for altcoins? Well, that's a difficult one because obviously Lightning is a payment rail, you know, it's a payment protocol. So definitely there needs also be more work to be done, you know. So um, Lightning isn't finished yet, you know, there's still work to do. But from a current perspective, I believe there won't be a need for any altcoins in the future. I know obviously there's different asset managers who use other blockchains to issue tokens or something, but that's something obviously up to them you know i really look into that from a payment perspective you know i've always been interested in payments how is it possible to get money from a to b on the very efficient way that's what i'm looking into also but from a consumer perspective when i receive the money how much is it worth so obviously and bitcoin doesn't have that loss of value over time which i might have with any altcoin uh, and that's why i believe in the end of the day most of these projects will die yeah. Obviously, if there's some altcoins that get used by big, big players, big companies to obviously deploy tokens or maybe NFTs, then they might live a little longer. But I, I think the, the brighter mass will also, or like big companies will use Lightning just to have internal payments between, for example, Africa and America within a company to make that cheaper as well. So um, I think that's the future of payments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's always fascinating that. Like, like Bitcoin is still here, even though it was attacked so many times yeah. and there's no like centralized uh, company. The founder, Satoshi Nakamoto, left so early on. Like yeah. it, it was like n not even in a, like I, he said like, oh, it's ready, but it was really early, like really small still back then. Yeah. Um, even now it's kind of early and kind of small still, but uh, it's it's fascinating that this this idea is so powerful of decentralized money that people are willing to fight for it 24 seven. Like I, now my whole life evolves <laughs> around Maybe. Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, I do from Monday to Sunday, every day, like between eight to 10 hours uh, work for Bitcoin, sometimes 12 to 14. Uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating how this, this, this system or how this, uh, uh, how this powerful idea, this attractive idea, like sucks you in and then you really yeah. want yeah. to get involved in, in that. And it's uh, also like really fascinating. Like you also work now 24, like 24 seven, but, uh, full time in Bitcoin, right? Yes. So, yeah, but it, obviously I come from a fiat, fiat job perspective. So for last, my last job was actually selling anti-money laundry software to big banks. So I really come out of the fiat, fiat perspective as well. Um, but working in Bitcoin really changed a lot for me. Also meeting very interesting people, obviously creating a new product, which maybe helps sending the message about Bitcoin adoption to, to merchants, you know, and uh, I just believe it's a good, we are very early, obviously, but also I think it's good if you work in Bitcoin um, because there will be more jobs in the future, for example. So I think for everyone who's interested in, in maybe 
getting a Bitcoin job one day. I think it's not bad to already start networking with obviously different startups, different companies, because there will be jobs, there will be loads in the future. And I think it's a good thing, good thing to invest your time in, it, especially when you get it paid or if it's your job, obviously, then it's even, even better. Really cool. Yeah, you, you worked in AML uh, before and like AML KYC is always an interesting topic in, in, in Bitcoin. Uh, how do you see uh, like all the, the KYCs that's going on? I mean, there's like, you, you can obviously buy Bitcoin right now, just like non-KYC, uh, like from a friend, basically. I, yeah. I could visit you and give you like 100 euros and you just like transfer me some some Bitcoin. That's like something easy to do. Uh, easy, but that, that's like way harder to do than just buying it on exchange what's your like opinion on on like kyc aml and all, all those those things well obviously from a, there's two opinions you know i think you know but bitcoin was made for privacy you know so that's one big thing about bitcoin but also in the, you know thing was fiat was there before bitcoin and there was already laws and regulations about aml kyc before we really started using bitcoin as a form of payment or somewhere people thought we need now need kyc or something so personally i don't I wouldn't do it as a, if it wouldn't be there, I would, would appreciate it. But obviously there's the regulator who says, look, people, if you would like to, 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 um, to have Bitcoin, you have to do a KYC process. And that's something I cannot decide and cannot change either. What I can, can just do is to really, um, still do the best to send the message that Bitcoin is still a good thing, you know, because I, if there will be KYC, we have to do it, you know, and I just believe I wouldn't, I don't want Bitcoin to, to, to be stopped. Let's say I don't want Bitcoin to, to, to die due to the fact that no, that there, that there's KYC in place now, you know, so from my perspective, I'm not a big fan of KYC, but I wouldn't mind doing it if this helps Bitcoin adoption. As you worked in there and uh, it's interesting for me because I, had some people that also worked in KYC and, and AML and tried to do all those things uh, f before in the fear job. And, and they kind of all said to me, like, it does not really like they, they are filling out a lot of documents, but they don't do a lot with that. Uh, and, and the KYC and AML is like more like it's just bureaucracy. And like, even, even if they have some things, they don't really like, is, was it also your um, observation that like it's a lot of filling out the forms and filling out documents and then the documents just get older and nobody touches them anymore? Well, from my perspective, I was in charge selling like really software packages, like say a whole AML solution to a big bank. So obviously that there's different things to be looked at. You know, there's sanction lists, there's lists of people who might be politically exposed. And if there's transaction incoming, you need to have checks to these lists as well as to different other things. And that was mostly what I was doing before. Um, obviously it was European and Swiss banks, but now it's with Bitcoin, you know, I think also Bitcoin isn't a really good tool for money laundry as well. So obviously if you looked into that, you know, there's software available already to really trace that back, trace payments back. Obviously, if you, if you use some kind of mixer or something, but that's also with the real world money laundering is more you try to launder, it's more money you will lose of it, you know, obviously. So as more you mix the money, as more fees you will have due to the mixing. So um, I just think it's not a good thing, not a good tool for, for money laundry as well. And so it's getting used for it, obviously, but that will be less. And I think obviously the US dollar is being used more for money, money laundering at the end of the day. So that's not an excuse for, for me to say Bitcoin is like... Uh, just for money laundry, you know, obviously. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your Bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure they are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody and how to be a secure, sovereign 
individual in general. And for those of you who are in search of a new Bitcoin exchange where they can buy their Bitcoin from, I recommend my personal Bitcoin exchange 21 Bitcoin. With code Robin, you get a hefty discount for all your purchases in the future. Yeah, it's it's for me, it's it's so this argument, oh, Bitcoin is for criminals. I mean, yeah. it kind of vanished already. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like even in the mainstream society, it, it kind of, I don't hear it that much anymore. Maybe yeah. I just, <laughs> maybe I just built my bubble out to, at this point. So no, but it's good. I think it's good, Robin, you know, because that was obviously when I remember back, you know, I had my, my dad who, who compared it with the tulips, tulips from, from Holland, you know, had different stories like you or like everyone who's in Bitcoin a couple of years about Bitcoin from family and friends and stuff. And I believe even if I'm, not a big fan of different things. I believe as more news we get about Bitcoin, about like BlackRock as well, all these different things, it's good for Bitcoin from a news perspective. And the normal people, the no coiner, hear from it from a day to day perspective. And that's important for Bitcoin adoption. Um, so I always look at the end outcoming in the end of the day, and that has to be the right thing. You know, obviously, there's loads of stuff to be done on the way there. And we cannot make it right for everyone. But in the end of the day, Bitcoin, I, I hope Bitcoin wins or I believe Bitcoin will win. Uh, and there will be mass adoption at some point of view. Absolutely. And I always go to this comparison about the, my personal Christmas table of a big family. And I just know that in 2019, nobody in my family, even not even uh, even even not even me uh, was in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And so in 2020, I was coming in Bitcoin. So in, in 2020 at the Christmas table, I was the, the one weird one that had Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did not talk about it on the Christmas table because I was like kind of shy and I was like, ah, I don't know if this bit, like I was not that secure mm. about Bitcoin at this point, um, but ca people knew that I was in Bitcoin and there was some talking points with, with some colleagues and there, some f family members there. And then like, as the years progressed, like more and more came in, like my dad, my mom, my, yeah. my sister, yeah. Yeah. Um, her, her friend, then my cousin, like, all, like the, the, the Christmas table, if like you imagine like 40, 50 people, like first it was just like one guy, then it's like two, then three. And I feel like that's the, the grassroots movement that we have. And I think when, when people ask me like, what, what can I do to, to, uh, progress the Bitcoin movement the most is like two things. Um, first, uh, orange pill your loved ones, orange pill your neighbors, orange pill the people that are in your environment. That's the true grassroots movement that we need. And second, if you pay for something, ask if you can pay in Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously, if, if they want to ask, they can uh, directly refer to, to you as, as a solution, stuff like that. Uh, but then the important thing is that they ask, because yeah. imagine uh, you have a merchant, you never spoke to them, uh, and they had already like five, six people before, hey, can, awesome. can I uh, uh, pay in Bitcoin? And then you come in and say, hey, do you want to accept Bitcoin in your store? And then you're like, oh, yeah, um, people ask me about that. Like, uh, how is that possible? That hundred percent, but that's also why we also with Opar, we've got a partner model in place. So we've got already, I think, between 25 and 30 um, yeah, partners who help us selling or sending the message towards merchants in an, an affiliate or implementation agreement because it's about exactly what you're saying it's not it's about every bitcoiner spending uh, sending the message to merchants and friends and family and uh, for that part obviously with the merchants there's us and we give a very fair share of the transaction fee lifelong to the to the partners who help or refer us to the merchants and i believe that's also one key to 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 involve bitcoiners use existing network um, and leverage it. Absolutely. And then uh, the obvious question for me is now, when we have this grassroots movement, more and more people come in, how do you envision Bitcoin scaling? Obviously, we have the Lightning Network. Um, do we need above that layer two solutions? Uh, I hear a lot about then we need federations like Fediment or eCash or Arc or other things like that. Uh, how do you see like um, um, Bitcoin scaling in, in the future? Well, from my, from my perspective, I told you I'm not too techy in, in, into that, but I believe, you know, layer two, you know, as I said, it's not, not 100% finished yet. It's working very good, but there has to be stuff to be done, obviously, to make it more reliable, to have it on a world scale used. And, but I believe if as soon as we've got more nodes running, more liquidity into the channels, more people using it, more people working on that, on layer two as well, that will be more reliable and will be, will be used. Because there's, from my perspective, no need for a layer three. You can use it if you want with a third party, but in the end of the day, we are a non-custodial. That's what we believe, what, what we are doing. Um, the Pagos will really take, 
payment in, payment out to the merchant in his non-custodial or custodial Lightning wallet, what he can decide. And I believe there will be just more services like us. You know, there's already loads of other services where you've got just an application or something else. And I don't see them as competition, to be honest, because I believe every company which has merchant adoption is good. So I would never would never really hate against competition, you know, because there's a use case for everything. You know, there might be merchants who just need an app on their phone to accept Bitcoin payments, but there might also be merchants where the boss is not in the shop and they need some kind of device to accept Bitcoins because they don't want to have the the, 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 the employee really built into their phone. But also I've spoken to loads of, let's say, people who work in restaurants and stuff, they get minimum wage and they're also not up to accept Bitcoin payments on their private phone for their boss. So that's where we really thought as well to have a designated device for these payments and it could be stolen as well. So it really, it's just a stupid, stupid device to, to, to invoice, um, no, it's stupid device. It's a, it's a simple device just to, to invoice, um, lightning payments and it can't if it's lost you just get a new one put on your your, your address your your lightning wallet address again you can can go back to business except bitcoin payments so there's not much risk or something else involved if you if you accept bitcoin payments with us you know so that's what we really um try to do ah really cool um how does uh actually when when merchants uh will be accepted like they they probably ask about the fees like involved in, in that thing how does uh your solution and also the lightning network non-custodial um compare to like credit card fees for merchants that's also different from a different uh from 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 country to country in germany there's obviously there's um I speak from a german perspective or maybe from an austrian as well there's obviously debit cards and credit cards and there's these days very cheap fees on debit cards right now already possible but the germans they like to use credit cards as well because they get cashback let's say membership rewards of american express or miles and more with visa and that's obviously they want to get some the, the customer would like to get something out of it of his purchase in addition to to the purchase itself We, with 1% transaction fee, are still, um, I think it's fine. You know, this it could be a, bit, a little bit cheaper, but we obviously have got costs to run the node. We've got uh, legislation costs, uh, regulation costs. So we're just about to go through the crypto asset service provider, provider licensing with the Mika. Obviously, that's everything what we need to handle right now. But I believe, obviously, in the future, when there will be when obviously it's cheaper for us to run the whole infrastructure as well, then it might be possible to, to lower fees too. But right now I think it's very fair, fair 1% to really accept Bitcoin payments without the, the need to, to, to have own inbound liquidity to really just to accept Bitcoin, Bitcoin payments fast and easy. And you don't need to run a remote as well. So that's something I believe in comes in a second or third step, you know, orange pilling the merchant is like, it has to be very easy. He shouldn't have any disadvantages out of it. When you then talk to him the third, the second, third, fourth time after Orange building him, then you can speak about non-custodial. You can tell him a little bit more about. He will start to maybe dig into the topic as well. Um, but I wouldn't really go to the merchant on the first date and tell him you have to run your own Bitcoin note now. You have to this. You have to do that because that just makes it more difficult in the sales process to get him really accepting Bitcoin payments. So um, I believe there's a learning curve as well. Um, and it has to start as easy as possible. And then obviously more technical or difficult things come afterwards. I just thought about like this, this could be such a massive trigger event for Bitcoin adoption. When we have uh, Bitcoin accepted here more and more, like yeah. more, more and more, uh, more, more uh, uh, merchants accepted, people will pay then the merchants in Bitcoin. Uh, even if they uh, sell it immediately, They know about Bitcoin and then they're like, oh, I accepted some Bitcoins like a year ago and they are now double the value. Why did I not keep the Bitcoin? Exactly, exactly. But also from a consumer's perspective, you know, there's some people who always ask me, Michael, why should I pay my Bitcoin? Why should I use my Bitcoins? You know, obviously, like there's one reason, like the one reason is what I just before helping the ecosystem obviously grow the Bitcoin Bitcoin ecosystem with spending Bitcoin as well. But on the other hand, let's say you've got one Bitcoin, two, three or 0.1 and obviously you changed fear to bitcoin you paid my maybe paid one 1.5 percent for the exchange rate and then let's say you would like to purchase something you would then go back to purchasing back or exchanging it back to fiat paying again fee for that and then spending my money spending the fiat so obviously the ideal case would be now to have as much as possible solutions now or 
places where then I can spend or they can spend their Bitcoins rather than exchanging back to fiat. And that's what we're trying to do as well, obviously. It's more places there's where people can spend their Bitcoin. It's less likely that there's exchange it back to fiat and to spend it there, you know, because it's obviously, you know, in Germany, Germany, there's a, a sentence called hin und her macht Taschen there. Obviously, it comes from from trading stocks. And but it's the same here, you know, because obviously, there's an, ex there's an exchange who wants to make money. And um, there's just no need what I believe to exchange it again back to fiat if you want once have Bitcoin, obviously, as a store of value, but then obviously to spend it at one day as well. Uh, I, I love it a lot. And, and then you like then we can get to a point where we actually get rid of the uh, fiat system uh, will will be will be really cool. Um, we talked a little bit about, about lightning. Maybe for those people who don't know, uh, like a high level uh, explanation, of why is it important and what 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 is it? So what we at Alpago are doing, we actually run our own node. Uh, it's also deployed in Kubernetes as well to actually be the middleman, let's say Abacus. You might know an Abacus uh, from, from your math um, times in, in school. So actually we're just sitting there and we move one payment from one side to the other. So we put own liquidity on our node to then obviously be able to have that service working. So the, the customer sends his payment in and we route it directly to the merchant's Lightning wallet and take care of all the transaction uh, transaction reports in CSV, PDF, coin tracking as soon as uh, we will have a data DATEV as well. And um, also take care about the inbound liquidity, obviously, if, spoken to the regulator or are in the regulation process to to or then the process to 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 get the um, crypto asset service provider license and that's all um part of that you know obviously regulation isn't about lightning but it's just about running that 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 these channels um right and obviously receiving your payment and that's um with lightning what we take care of obviously do you think it's it's like bitcoin has the massive network effect this massive uh all those things going, like first move advantage, network effect, all those things going for them. I don't think we will ever get rid of Bitcoin anymore. Um, maybe at like hundreds of thousands of years in the future, there might be something coming new coming oh. up. I, I don't think so because Bitcoin is uh, programmable, so you can actually change it if there's some new uh, challenge to it. Um, so it could actually be the end all be all money. Um, but, uh, it's a, it's a hard thing to say like for a thousand of years, because you have no clue what's coming. Maybe they're like aliens coming and they have superior technology and superior mm -hmm. uh, money. And then we have to adapt their money, stuff like that. But, uh, Bitcoin is for like the next, I guess, hundred years, like the money that, that, um, will mo most likely be the number one and will most likely be the one that everyone wants to have. With the Lightning Network, uh, it's a still a little bit in the earlier days. Do you think it's possible still to have other second layer solution like Lightning, uh, the, that the network effects and all the things that are already going for Lightning, um, uh, is still able to break or will Lightning be the main catalyst to, to scale Bitcoin? Well, that's something obviously I cannot answer again very, very good. But I believe, you know, it's the same with Bitcoin and altcoins. If you look back, you know, we had Bitcoin as the first really cryptocurrency and it's still the biggest cryptocurrency. And Lightning, obviously, if you look at the charge from a transaction point, if you think River done a very nice analytics on that, um, that you can really see since Lightning is there, uh, we've got that massive growth of transactions as well not just on the main chain, but if you look overall on that Bitcoin transaction thing, including Lightning. And it's obviously, I think it's four years old now or five years already. And um, there has to be something new, obviously, and it needs time to develop again. So I believe if I look back, you know, Bitcoin was there first, it's still there. Lightning now was there first as a layer two um, um, solution. It's getting worked on so possibly there will be other layer two solutions but i think li lightning will be the, the the dominant one yeah yeah I, I always see like when i had already a lot of people that are way smarter than me when it comes to uh, scaling on and the kind of thing that uh, i see coming just because i talk with them and, and get the information not because i uh, actually do the research myself so i have to do that still uh, in a in a deeper way but the thing that I heard, and I think even Jeff Booth said that, uh, that he imagines uh, the scaling of Bitcoin like that. He imagines Lightning being the, the main thing above uh, Bitcoin. And then 
uh, for the last mile, there could be at some point limitations that we run into Lightning and then do some federations with like Fediment or eCash or other things like that. So, but I think, I think we're at the point where we kind of agree on like, oh, we need Lightning. Yes. Uh, and you can already see it like when you go to Bitcoin conferences, when you go somewhere uh, where they accept Bitcoin, like Lightning is the is the thing. Yeah. It's, it's not something else. So uh, I think Lightning probably is the answer to scaling Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, it, it, that's why I ask, like uh, it, it's, it's so interesting to think of like that early network effects is like, asking in, in 2012 if Bitcoin could be replaced. Like 2012, it's it's a way more interesting question. Now it's like, ah, oh, no, <laughs> nobody can replace Bitcoin. Like that's, you cannot get another Bitcoin. Well, you know, from a payment perspective, you know, seven transactions per second is not scaling. You know, there's, you know, it can't be possible if you're at the point of sale, let's say in the supermarket and there's someone spending their Bitcoin in Brazil at the same time that you have to wait and the cashier cannot do their business. So that was that digital gold thing all the time. And I believe, you know, it was, made as a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, not as a digital gold reserve. Obviously, it's a nice thing to it as well, to have like this permanent storage of value as well. But I believe Bitcoin needs to be spent as well, that we get that ad adoption point, you know, as I said, the, the, the example of water before. And um, also, when you spend it, you will always sometimes spend it to someone who, do have, who doesn't have Bitcoin right now. So you directly orange and pill him as well, you know, there's... So good, so much good things about spending a couple of sats from time to not, to time. There's nothing really bad to say against it. Just maybe there's some people who say, Oh, remember back if you, you spent five years ago, you spent X amount for one pizza. But you know, without this, this pizza story, there wouldn't be like so much things about spending Bitcoin at all. So that guy did a great job, I believe. And obviously that could be millions, billions now worth of Bitcoin, but you know, maybe Bitcoin wouldn't be here now if, people like him wouldn't have done that in the past, you know, showing that Bitcoin is not just some digital gold. It's also possible to spend, to get something for it. And that was the first thing was a pizza. And now, you know, I can go, for example, I can go to my newspaper shop. I can get every newspaper. I can get, can get a, even get a beer there. I can go one, 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 um, village over there. I can get burgers there. I can go to, to Munich, to the city, can have drinks there with my mates in the evening. I can even get, um, like um repair and works done in the olympic olympic village um at a facility manager in bitcoin so there's loads of places to spend bitcoin already and it's growing you know i've also seen i think on coin telegraph i've seen in 23 there was almost i think 173 i'm not sure i, I wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't say um, I, I can't remember the, the the right number but there was an extreme merchant adoption last last in the, in the last year and i think that's a very good thing for bitcoin because as i said before when people get confronted with that topic on a daily basis and everyone needs to buy food, needs to see the barber, has to rent a car, whatever. And they always see the Bitcoin accepted, accepted sticker or like the merchant ask, would you like to spend in Bitcoin as well? Then there's a, there's more advertise, good advertising for Bitcoin, you know? And uh, for example, I've got that one newspaper shop just around me and I'm, I'm kind of friends with this merchant now already. And generally I would get a beer if I go there for free. But now because I'm spending my Bitcoin there, he's always so happy that I visit him because he's actually getting Bitcoin for his, for the stuff he's, 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 he's um, selling. And he's always so happy when someone goes in to spend Bitcoin. Um, because he keeps it really, he really keeps it. He's not off ramping it to Euro and he really keeps it in the business. Um, because obviously for him, it was also it, in, the, in the beginning, it wasn't easy to purchase Bitcoin at all. So I really showed him how to purchase Bitcoin. And now he's a bit lazy instead of purchasing it. He's just accepting Bitcoin, you know, so that's, I think it's a good thing. And he's always happy to receive Bitcoin and um, happy, happy merchant, happy life, uh, happy, happy life. You know, that's, that's, that's all at the end of the day for us. And I mean, that's, that's the ultimate stacking goal that you don't have to buy Bitcoin, that you can just earn Bitcoin. That, that, that's amazing. 100%, 100%. Yeah, I love it a lot. And even like if you are now on like 30% Bitcoin and 70% fee or the other stocks or whatever, even if you then buy Bitcoin, it's not like, oh, you spend it and then, oh, then you look back in like 30 years, oh, what could have that been? Because you can also just buy more Bitcoin, buy more Bitcoin with the fiat. Like for me, as example with the pizza, uh, it doesn't really make sense for me because he like, when, when we go back and do, see this, this guy and he spent like 10,000 Bitcoin on a pizza, 
how many Bitcoin does he still have? Like he obviously understood yeah. Bitcoin. It was interesting. Like maybe he had like hundred thousand Bitcoin in his wallet and he spent 10,000. 10, yeah. um, he could also just like bought more. Uh, yeah. Maybe he saw then because of that transaction, uh, oh, Bitcoin is actually working. Uh, and it's really nice. I can work for maybe that's why that's the thing that he needed to prove for yeah. himself. And that's why he does not have like 10,000 Bitcoin. Maybe that's why he has now 200,000 Bitcoin. Who knows? Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we, I, I think it's not known how many Bitcoin he has now. Uh, yeah. Probably not known because it would be stupid Enough. for him to, to say. Uh, but he, yeah, but the people just see what he lost with that transaction, yeah. Yeah. but they don't see what he probably gained from that transaction exactly. individually. Exactly. So obviously no one would spend their whole Bitcoins on one item, you know, as I said before, you know, there might be some people who are hodling or believe Bitcoin is some kind of that diversity pro portfolio, whatever, you know, but everyone can use Bitcoin as they desire. You know, I think that's one good thing about Bitcoin. I would not tell everyone what to do with your Bitcoin, but what I would really like to see from everyone is, you know, lightning wallet, non-custodial or custodial choice of the Bitcoin at the end of the day using it just to have a couple of euros or dollars in Bitcoin Lightning on there and really try to spend it. You know, it's just a couple of couple of euros you anyway spend, you know, it's for beer, for 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 some food or whatever, or for presents. And it just really helps. It really helps the Bitcoin ecosystem. Amazing. Um, before we come closer to the end of the routine, um, a couple of questions. Why are you so motivated to work full time in Bitcoin? What What drives you? Well, to be honest, in the beginning, it was um, I really wanted to get out of the fear job. I was employed for the last, I think, yeah, since I've started working, you know, I've started an apprenticeship in IT system sales. I've moved to the UK. I've worked there for American Express. Then I came back, was working in software again. And it was all good. You know, you can obviously earn money with fear. There's always money to be made, but it's not like you don't get that 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 feeling in the end of the day that you've done something right. You know, I really I was a bit sick of my fear job, to be honest. It was always the same. You know, you could sell, you sell, but in the end of the day, you just get money out of it. There's no nothing else. And with Bitcoin, for example, when I now reference another merchant, we make another post. There's so much Bitcoin is saying, well, good job. Thank you very much. You're helping the ecosystem. We're, getting, we're really getting it back. You know, it's not just about the merchants, but it's about the Bitcoiners who really see that uh, we're getting up early really to orange pill merchants to send the message that it's important that there's merchant adoption and we get much back. You know, there's also, for example, different online online um, people I've met through through that topic who really gave me loads of knowledge as well to Bitcoin, to Bitcoin uh, about Bitcoin, which I didn't even know before. And I hadn't had any negative experience out of it so far to be honest it was for me a very good a very good time so far and i would really like to continue doing what i'm doing because i really feel good in the evening when i sit down after exhausting day i think i've done something right what is for you the most important aspect uh, of of bitcoin the most important aspect of bitcoin i believe is that you're your own boss when it comes to your money like you can be your own boss when it comes to your money obviously you can decide how much service or how much non-custodial or custodial stuff you would like to use. But at the end of the day, you can decide. There's no, not, there's no, no must or have to. You know, you can run a note. You don't have to. You can have a hardware wallet. You don't have to. You can leave them on exchange. You don't have to. Obviously, there's the, a good way taking off the exchange, put it in your hardware wallet. But there's maybe, for example, older people who don't trust in a hardware wallet, you know, because they just cannot realize what it what it means, what it is when it's lost. They don't realize you need separate keys. You, uh, so that's that's one thing that is, I believe it's so multi usable. And there will be more solutions in the future to have even more people on board who are not sure about Bitcoin yet. And I believe in the long way there will be possibilities for everyone to get the best out of Bitcoin. Ah, that's that's very true and very beautiful. Honestly, uh, I, I love that view. Um, one question that I always ask that is outside of Bitcoin uh, in the end of the podcast is like, what can we learn from you personally uh, besides Bitcoin? Hmm. Well, let me maybe maybe put it a little bit still together with Bitcoin. I believe engagement is very important. Staying on it, you know, even if you get maybe like if you maybe fall down and maybe something happens or you get you get uh, negative feedback, but always believe in your vision and always just be engaged, stay on the ball, you know, just, just 
smash it. Quite a lot. Perfect. Then let's come to the end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest mm -hmm. without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and your question is an interesting one. Uh, I would have several answers for that. What is the most annoying aspect of the Bitcoin community? So um, I think the most annoying um, thing about Bitcoin is that some of the Bitcoiners are really like just to be offline. So they're not really up for meeting at Bitcoin meetups. So you might just meet them. You never meet them in the future. That's, a bit, I think, a bit sad about it, you know, but everyone's got their privacy and their views on, but still nice to meet these people. And But that's a little bit annoying from my perspective because I like really to know who I'm talking to. And yeah. Amazing. Perfect. Then uh, before I let you go, uh, where can uh, people find you, ask you questions? Where can people reach out to you? Well, you can obviously find us on the internet with, uh, on www.opago-pay.com. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, Instagram, or you can just write me an email um, to michael.dulk at opago-pay.com. If you've got any questions, I'm always here to help. Or if you maybe would like to partner with us or if you've got a merchant, a restaurant nearby, you would like to have Bitcoin accepted, then just let, let us know. Let, let me know. We try our best to, to onboard that merchant. Amazing. Perfect. Then uh, thank you for joining us today, Michael. Uh, also for everyone listening and watching, thank you for joining us today. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Thank you much, Ron. Bye-bye.